Hi, it's Robin. I've got two controllers here that look like analog trackballs, but actually they function just like Atari and Commodore compatible digital eight-way joysticks. You know, like one of these. Both have the regular nine pin joystick connector. Both have a single fire button, just like the Atari Commodore standard. This one here is called the Wico Command Control. It does have an actual ball. Well, this is the Rocklin Unroller Controller. And while it looks like it has a ball, it's actually more like a really strange D-pad that you just push on the sides. It actually can't spin at all. So for the Wico Command Control, I do have the box. Trackball for Atari, Commodore, and Sears model. New. The arcade trackball comes to the home. For the first time, the magic of 360-degree movement. For the first time, control the speed of on-screen objects. Makes games lots more fun. Makes you a better player. Well, I'm not sure about any of those claims. They originally retailed for about $50. This was at Sears. And it looks like it went on, went on clearance all the way down to $8. Those were good days to be around. And while this version just works on the Atari and Commodore, they did apparently make versions for the TI-99, the Apple II, the Radio Shack, TRS-80 color computer, and even the Odyssey console. Inside the box is this little holder just for the joystick cable to go in. That tucked in the corner. Still has the warranty card. Wico in Niles, Illinois. Wico? I always said Wico. And the instruction manual. Congratulations, you have just purchased the finest trackball money can buy. Features injection molded modular construction. Phenolic ball provides unique 360 degree movement to an infinite number of positions. <laughs> Could also be used to vary the speed of on screen objects. So that's all kind of true, but so that it's compatible with existing games, really, it just boils down to emulate an eight way joystick. But we'll give it a play in a little bit and we'll see that it does sort of allow you very speed, but that's not necessarily all that great of a thing. Just to look at the command control, it's quite hefty, pretty solid construction. Uh, AT sticker, I, I assume that's short for Atari. Okay, and to look at the unroller controller, unfortunately I don't have the box for this. I found some old photos from eBay. This originally retailed for $40, and you got two of these in the box. So quite a bit cheaper per controller, $20 compared to 50, but uh, you can definitely tell you get what you pay for, I think as well. So it has a much cheaper feel to it. And again, very little to it. We'll open these controllers up later after we've had to play with them. So I think some people were calling trackballs roller controllers. In fact, ColecoVision that's what they named their trackball, the roller controller. So obviously this unroller controller was a play on that. Sorry for the ugly box photo. I... <laughs> yeah, the marketing hype again. Typical joysticks don't give you the control or the high scores. Take a look at Rockland's exclusive unroller controller. This new concept in controller design gives you the control you desire without the problems of joysticks. No more blisters from grasping the joystick handle too tightly. No more broken joystick handles during intense play. Rockland's Unroller Controller comes with a full one-year warranty. It's designed to give you many years of trouble-free arcade action. And that's just what you'd expect from the company that brought Wizard of War and Gorf home from the arcades. Yeah, I think Rockland was responsible for the Atari ports of Wizard of War and Gorf. Of course, on the Commodore, it was Commodore themselves that published those two games. And the box continues, although the unroller controller looks like a trackball, the controller action and price are totally different. Place your fingers on the ball to get a feel of this revolutionary new controller design. 
rock the ball to the left and right, forward and backward. It has a natural feel to it, a feeling you'll appreciate when you start racking up higher scores and getting to the higher levels. <laughs> so even though with trackballs you'd usually think of maybe Centipede or Missile Command, I've been playing a lot of Gorf lately and I heard it was just Eric Cotton's birthday. He's the guy who programmed the C64 version of Gorf. Unlike a lot of early shooters, it does feature up and down movement as well as left and right, kind of like Centipede. So I think we're going to use that as the test game today. And the idea here is I'm going to try and use both these controllers to play through one round of Gorf. Just give us an idea of the difference in the controls and if either of them are any good. As always, there's an index below. If you don't want to see me play these games, you just want to jump ahead to opening them up then just check the index below. Power up the 64. Okay, here we go, it's Gorf. And there are those initials, EMC, that's for Eric Cotton. CBM, Commodore Business Machines. Who is MJB? I'm not sure. Okay, let's give this a try. I won't show you me playing with the joystick. I can go through three or four cycles of the game. That is all, there's four levels in Gorf. So I can probably get to phase, I don't know, 14 or 15 with the joystick. I don't think I have to prove that, do I? Hey, anyway, we'll, we'll play this. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's weird playing it with a trackball. So yeah, my goal is to get through the four levels here. Get It's okay dodging. Ah, <laughs> so so. Yeah, definitely different experience play ah, playing it with the trackball. Oh. So yeah, you don't really have full control of your speed because it's still capped to the maximum speed that the joystick allows. So I'm doing really poorly here. Mostly just trying to survive here. Now for this phase, you've got to kind of knock out. Well, I hope I'm not shaking the camera too much. Sorry about that. So the idea here is to hit that red target in the middle of the flagship here. The trackball feels pretty nice, but it's still strange playing a digital game, you know, a digital joystick game with that. Oh! Whoa. Oh, I got double killed there. Okay, 8,460. Phase 6. This is okay. The trackball itself has a good feel. It doesn't translate into the game. The thing is, if I had a joystick version of Centipede, it wouldn't be any better. It's not the game. It's just this is translating into joystick controls, and the game code itself is going to be limiting the speed that you're allowed. So even when you give it a good spin, you're still just capped at the same speed as if you just pushed the joystick in a certain direction. Okay, so I'll unplug. 
the command control. And here's the unroller controller. Plug into port one. Okay, so for this, yeah, right away I can feel how much cheaper it is. It's very plastic. It's creaking away under my hand. So I have to push down. Kind of push down into it and then kind of lean, lean the hand the way you want to go. Okay, there. <laughs> creak, creak. Actually, not finding it any harder to control. In a way, it's kind of natural. Oh. But yeah, it's strange just kind of shifting the hand around. Not sure it's more comfortable. Uh, certainly isn't more comfortable than a joystick to me. Actually did better with this than uh, than with the more real trackball. Oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's what happened to me later. Okay, so I did get a worse score. Wouldn't entirely blame that on the controller, though. I kind of lost focus during that last part. Okay, so. Anyway, both of them are good enough that I can get through one round and maybe with practice I could go further. As far as being able to react quickly, this really wasn't any worse than the real trackball. Uh, maybe sometimes it even felt a little better as far as getting a quick response with that kind of rocking motion. But on the flip side, just the way it's creaking and just feels so cheap, you know, I guess overall... Uh, I go with the Wiko a little bit. So when I got both of these controllers, neither was working well enough for me to really play. So on both of them, I opened them up uh, before I made the video and did a little bit of work on them. So let's, I'll just show you now what the insides are like and the little bit of work I did. Okay, so first to look inside the command control. It has six screws. And they're pretty good size. I use my fairly beefy screwdriver here for it. All six screws are out. Now the top just lifts off. So it's a very clean design. The top is just a single piece and it has that fire button. Well, it's a bit squeaky, eh? I think it's really nicely designed. Here's the actual trackball. Quite heavy. And it's got two of these. Uh, what do you call these? I want to call them bearings, but they're cylindrical, not round, with this optical wheel. Last time I dared to show some hardware, quite a few people told me instead of using like three in one oil, I should use this all-purpose machine oil, and it's by Singer. It's like sewing machine oil, and it really seems quite good. So I used a little bit on these here. So yeah, there's two of these, and those wheels go in this optical sensor that can count the rotations. And it does have two little springs sitting under each roller. There's the fire button switch. Wicko joysticks generally use 
pretty high quality components. You can see everything's like very cleanly done here. Okay, and it all feeds into this microcontroller here, which is a Motorola SC87152P. So I looked that up, and that's actually an 8-bit microcontroller based on the Motorola 6805, which is part of the Motorola 6800 family. And apparently it has 1,100 bytes of user ROM and 64 bytes of RAM. So that's a complete microcontroller right there single chip solution and presumably that has the code that tracks the optical wheel movements and translates that into joystick movements which are then sent out uh, with the correct pin set. Nice construction. Seems more or less worth 50 bucks. And just that third wheel. It's actually a lot like a mouse design. This reminds me of the first mouse Commodore ever made for the C64 actually just emulated a joystick as well. And then the next one they made uh, was a true analog, but if you powered it up with the mouse button held down, it would boot up in this joystick emulation mode too. So anyway, besides the oiling, I just did some cleaning, some contact cleaner on the switch. And once it was cleaned up, it worked a lot nicer. And to look inside this one, has four screws, one, two, three, and four. Four screws out. And this one's kind of the opposite. Almost everything's in the top of the case. Two more small screws holding the circuit board in to the top of the case. Let's check that out. Okay, that's all there is to it. Just a big plastic piece with the larger of the two springs, say, in the middle. There's the fire button again with a spring. And there's the top. Okay, and this is all we're left with. So I'll explain this. <laughs> this is my terrible repair job, but it works. So when I got this, left and the fire button didn't work very well at all. So really all there is to it, when you push on this, this inner ring here is pushing down on this plastic piece that's up above the circuit board. It's kind of almost glued in there. They, they press it through some holes and I think it's glued in. So it's not easy to remove. So when that yellow half ball pushes down here on this plastic ring, then it pushes down these little dome switches. You should be able to hear them click there. So this dome switch had a bit of a different sound to it, and so did the fire button. And the fire button in particular didn't seem to be working very well. These are the original ones here. The dome switches are just taped down. So I just peeled up the tape and checked them. And actually, what I did, I thought it was the dome switches that were the problem. So I opened up an old Atari 2600 joystick I had, because I knew these used the same kind of switches here. And I just removed that one outright and replaced the existing one. So this, this dome switch here is actually an Atari 2600 one. The Atari ones are almost a complete circle, but they have one little gap there, and that allows the trace to go underneath without making contact. So this is the ground trace here. And then this is the line that goes back for the fire button. So when you push down on the little dome, it just closes the circuit. So really all you have to do to put these on, they are the same size between the Atari 2600 and this unroller controller. You just have to make sure it's pointing the right way so it won't make contact. And then I just taped it back down again. 
And I did the same here. I didn't want to risk removing this and da like damaging this by removing it. But it wasn't all that hard just to slip the tape back underneath. Anyway, once I did that, it seemed to be working. Then I closed it all back up and played a game and left and fire stopped working again. So eventually I found that there's a small problem with the trace. I just tested continuity here from ground that goes all the way around. I lost continuity right around in here. So <laughs> quite a while ago, I had bought this carbon conductive pen. So I thought I'm going to fix these traces with it. Well, I did but you can see how ugly it is. So I'm showing this just to be totally honest with you guys. I know you're going to laugh at me or laugh at my job here, but basically that carbon pen, uh, it was really hard to get a uniform layer on top of the existing trace, but I, I laid it on really thick here where I think the break was and continued it on a bit. It's super ugly, but it does work, uh, at least for a while. I thought that would be an easy solution well, it sort of was, but uh, it'd be nice to do something that's not so ugly. It's really just like a giant button, almost like a D-pad. And it just goes back in like so. And just feed that back through there. Well, when you screw things back together, I've mentioned this before. Some people don't like me calling it a trick. So it's a technique. Just turn it counterclockwise there until you hear a little click. You hear a little bit of movement as the screw drops down to the existing thread. And then you won't uh, cross thread it. Again, counterclockwise. There, and that drops down. And then you can tighten clockwise as normal. Not a trick, apparently. That's just the right way to do it, say the YouTube commenters. Okay, so that's a look at the Wicco Command Control and the Rocklin Unroller Controller. Two different attempts at replacing joysticks with something that the marketing claimed was better. Uh, generally, I will keep my joystick, but I don't know, a really well-built version of this might be interesting. Kind of that rocking idea. Uh, seems to have some merit to it. And then everything about this is good, except that, you know, it's limited by the joystick compatibility constraints. Be interesting to get a true analog version of this. Hey, thanks to my patrons for their support. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, I appreciate your subscription. And we'll talk to you next time. Thank you.